Welcome to Digital Asset News. Take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, what a great day it is for the cryptocurrency and digital asset market. So first up, people believe that this is actually the big story. The big story is Coinbase debuting on Wall Street and the IPO or the direct listing. And I really believe that the big story is this, which really got buried. And that is that uh, the Senate confirms Gary Gensler as the SEC chairman and why this is so important to advance our market. So we'll take a look at all those things that are going on. On top of, we did a, a great in-depth report about the uh, Coinbase IPO over there with uh, Alex Masioli and his show. A couple of things I want to point out about what I found uh, was very interesting and how things actually became true as uh, the day progressed. And then we'll finish up with just a little bit of uh, Twitter madness that is going on. So First, uh, let's uh, take a look at what's going on in the market, shall we? So today, it is April 14th. It is about 2 p.m. El Paso, Texas time, and things are uh, looking pretty good. Actually, things looked really good when I woke up today, and then uh, Bitcoin dropped a little bit. So we are at uh, a market cap of around 2.2 something trillion dollars, which seems uh, pretty <laughs> ridiculous if you think about it, but here we are. Uh, you know, $2.2 trillion. And just a year ago, we only had $200 billion. Amazing. So we got uh, Bitcoin over the last 24 hours, just about a percentage drop, but we're down to 62.2. Ethereum is doing really good at, tw at uh, 23. It's up 3%. And then most of the things have just been just a big wide swath of what has been going up. But there is one big winner today, and it is Dogecoin. Um, well, actually, we're all winners, really. But uh, Dogecoin really is crushing it. Over the last seven days, Dogecoin has gone over 108%. This one says 96%, but sure. But uh, yeah, 32% in the last seven days, and it's actually dropped 8% in the last hour, but still, to go from roughly six cents to 12 cents and something, uh, congratulations. I think it was all the way up to 13 cents, so uh, that is amazing for me. But I have a question for everybody. I know a lot of things that are going on, but for Dogecoin, are people working on it? Is there a new partnership? Is there some new big master plan that is going on for Doge and uh, what is it, what it is doing? Is, has it been adopted by some government or something? But it is amazing to me. It baffles me. I don't hate on it. I'm very happy for it because, look, what's good for one is good for all. When the water rushes in, all the ships rise. Uh, I'm happy. But it just uh, kind of makes me wonder. I'm like, what really is it about Doge besides just the social media aspect and all those fantastic names? So that pretty much is going on. There's a lot of big uh, winners uh, below, but uh, let's just take a look at uh, the projected range real quick. This is what we're using, Trade the Chain. It's all sentiment analysis. So if you're a big trader, uh, take a look at Harvest Finance, uh, Bitcoin SV, Nervos, Bitcoin Gold, Aave. Does that say Wacky Coin? Wow, Wacky Chain. All right, and then we're looking at, uh, you know, just a little bit of margin. So today is one of those odd days. I wouldn't be uh, trading too much. It was just one of those days. So first of all, we'll get into this, this uh, story uh, in a little bit. But what I really want to talk to you about is what's going on with Gary Gensler. And this just kind of passed over everybody because right now, you know, there was a long time coming with the Coinbase IPO, a direct listing, and it went off. We'll take a look at the prices. But it doesn't matter some stock price of one individual company. What really determines really what, what happens in this, in this space is of course what you and I do, how we invest, how we hold or not hold, how we take profits and how we do certain things. And another thing is, whether you wanna believe it or not, it is how uh, these different people are appointed uh, to these different offices and their philosophies. Look, the last SEC chairman knew very little uh, about crypto and digital assets. And you saw what happened. He went after Ripple Labs. And that was a big, uh, you know, black spot or, or dark mark on our, our industry. I think uh, Ripple looks like they're going to pull out of it, which is amazing, but it really shouldn't, uh, I don't know if it really should have happened. It's not for me to say. I'm not a lawyer. So that's all I'll say about that. But when you get somebody like this, like a Gary Gensler, this guy knows cryptocurrency. Here he is right here. And you can just Google this, YouTube, Gary Gensler, cryptocurrency, MIT. He's teaching cryptocurrency digital assets to the students at MIT. This guy just gets it. So what is going on here? Well, this happened today, maybe late last night, I'm not for sure, but he was confirmed. Gensler, and just so you know, this guy isn't some Johnny come lately who just kind of stepped into it and it's like, well, I guess we'll do it. Gensler began his career as a banker at Goldman Sachs. Wait, before you jump up in arms, here's what else. 
He was also the chairman of the CFTC. He helped craft the Dodd-Frank reform legislation and aggressively implemented new rules regulating the derivatives market. So yes, he did all these things and that's awful or that could be good depending on how you look at it, I don't, whatever. But to me personally, I just want somebody in there who just really understands it and is an actual proponent of cryptocurrency on fat on the on top of he's already been in the traditional market space so he knows exactly what those bankers are doing look i want somebody in there who knows all the tricks of the trade and all the different underhanded and backhanded deals that are being done because i want somebody who has experience and he knows those guys if you want the golden sacks let's be honest they're not the cleanest uh, of everybody bankers are bankers whatever uh you 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 get what you give them and then of course the rest this whole report it's just about politics, which I'm not even going to go over because I almost fell asleep. So with this one, again, with Gensler in here and really just taking crypto into a new space, when we start talking about ETFs, which Coinbase just went public, went off pretty well. Actually, there was no like, you know, insider trading or some craziness. It was just like a, one of those days where it went up, went down. That's what we want. Boring. I like boring. So now we, we have that on top of these ETFs that we're talking about actually getting funded, well, Gensler could say, well, look, uh, if you think that uh, you know crypto and digital assets are really being used for nefarious purposes and uh, the cartels and terrorism, that's not true. And here's a study that backs that up. And here's why this is on a public ledger. Here's how difficult it actually is. Because guess what? I know all these things because I used to teach it at MIT. So again, this is a good thing. And I think this is a big story because this guy will shape where our industry goes. Let me know what you think in the comments section. That's what we got. So on top of that, just so you know, uh, there was a little IPO today. And uh, I was actually on uh, Alex Maschioli's show uh, as this thing was kind of coming about. And we all just talked about our different uh, opinions of where this would go. And I was going to go over all this, but I'm just going to give you the, the highlights real quick. So when it first came out, it was, it was expected to be around 20, 30 billion. Then there was a valuation of 50 billion. Then it was 50 to 100 billion. And then when it opened up, this is what it looked like. Let's use, let me just refresh this. This is the Robin Hood uh, website, eh, whatever. And uh, when it opened up, it was supposed to open up 250. And then they reevaluated it, it was 340. Then it opened up at 380, somewhere around there, somewhere around there. And it went like this, big, huge, massive bump. And at 424, I was like, this thing might hit 500 or 600, who knows? And then of course, just like the Coinbase effect, uh, it went up and what happened? Do, 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 do. Welcome to the regular traditional market. And down it goes. I think we're, we're hovering around 330, so not too bad. So a high of 424, hope you didn't buy up there. And then uh, just a big uh, dip and that went whatnot. And that's what it is. So. When we were over here on Alex's show, and we were talking about all these things, what was interesting to me is that uh, there was no pre-sale, there was no, because uh, it was a direct listing, you couldn't have a bunch of uh, you know super accredited investors really get their hands on it and then just dump on everything. Uh, only the uh, Coinbase uh, employees could have up to like 1% or something like that of the stock. So there was nothing really dirty that could be done and i think this one had to be squeaky clean because the sec is like look we don't even like you know beforehand we don't even like crypto digital assets and this went off pretty well so we were thinking that uh you know this could and actually played out just like alex and uh danish uh danish uh, and cj and nick said they said you know what it'll probably just do this it'll be flat go up and then we'll just tumble right back down and then we'll equalize and i was like yeah maybe and of course that's exactly how it was and they gave uh different reasonings because behind that especially like a, a facebook ipo and what would happen but um who knows another big thing we talked about was how uh this could lead to different traditional players to get exposure into cryptocurrency digital assets without actually owning crypto and digital assets just by investing into coinbase but what's very interesting was at the same time as this was about to happen you saw a big drop in bitcoin you saw a big drop in the entire market you saw a big drop in voyager uh the um uh, publicly traded uh, fund the actual uh, stock you saw a big drop in um a lot of different um, assets that you would think, why is all this dropping right now? What, uh, you know, what is happening? Like, like Mara and Riot, those stocks actually dropped. And, um, yeah. So what was, what was going on? Well, 
I was like, why is this happening? And Danish is like, well, listen, genius, it's because everybody's trying to, uh, you know, cash out and get a little bit of money so they can dump it into this uh, Coinbase and just, just make a quick buck. And I was like, huh, that makes a lot of sense. And then here we are. So uh, even Michael Saylor's company actually went down at the, at the same time. So yeah, it was a good, it was a good try. But uh, I mean, again, if you were going to do that and make a bunch of money, I don't think you made a ton going from 380 to 420. I mean, not bad for a day. You know, but then he just did this and everybody's dumped and blah, 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 blah. Off you go. So, um, yeah, we'll see how this all works out. And as time goes on, I don't think it's going to be uh, that big of a deal, but I could be wrong. So let me just say in the comment section. Um, but lastly, I will just say this. This is a pretty great year. I mean, look at all the institutions that are here. Look at all the different track that has been laid. Look at all the different uh, projects that actually have a working product and actually does something. Coinbase gets, list, gets listed. That is the second publicly traded company as far as an exchange right behind Voyager, even though Voyager is a brokerage. So uh, that is pretty interesting. And uh, hopefully 2021 is going to be a monstrous year. Let me just think in the comment section. Let's move on to our last piece. And uh, just a little little uh, notes here about uh, Twitter. So I just did a little poll and I said, hey, I thought it'd be funny if, uh, you know, Coinbase, which has their outages, if uh, during their listing, <laughs> that they actually went down uh, during the whole time, but uh, apparently didn't happen. They actually were able to stay up. So congratulations, Coinbase. Uh, for one time, you didn't crash. And uh, no, I'm just kidding. I mean, congratulations to Coinbase. They did a lot of, a lot of tough, tough work to get here. They've been around here since the very beginning. And I will say this. I talk bad about Coinbase because I'm kind of ticked off about their um, their fees. But look, if you're new and you don't know what's going on, Coinbase is a great place to start. And uh, they can onboard you and they can get everything done and you don't have to do anything really. It's super simple. So for them, the the ticket is worth the cost of the admission. And um, that's that's fine with me now. I mean, if it's that's what it's going to take, it's what it's going to take. So good. And then uh, talked about Doge in the top uh, top 10. and then. I just talked about, because Bitcoin today hit its all-time high uh, and then dropped a little bit. But I said, you know, who's feeling like a genius is uh, Diddy from the uh, Bitcoin family. That guy in 2017, he put, he sold his, his, all his vehicles, he sold his business and his house and put it all on Bitcoin at the very beginning of 2017 when it was like a, a grand or something like that. So that's a pretty good day for Diddy. And then there was two more things I want to talk about. And that was this. Uh, this was from uh, Charlie uh, Biello, and that is, Charlie here is the founder and CEO of uh, Compound Capital Advisors, and he always, he's always has great information to put out, and this one's no different. He talks about, he just, he just does a lot of analysis, and he says, look, here's the returns over last year. I thought it was interesting that Cardano was number one over last year, 3,290%, 3, Cardano. Pretty good, huh? And then we had Binance Coin, which you know has been a great for this year. Uh, Polkadot, Ethereum at eleven hundred, Uniswap nine fifty three. So when you take a look at you know like you just take a look at these projects first, of course, take a look at what they've done, but take a look at uh, or what they're doing, and take a look at how much they've actually grown over the last year. And then he kind of even breaks it down where he talks about year to date uh, different projects that are crushing it because we we all talk about you know how great Ethereum is doing and how Bitcoin, but we kind of get sidetracked with the horse blinders on. And we don't really take a look and take a step back. It's like, what about in percentage wise, what's been doing the best? And he lays it out. He goes, BitTorrent. BitTorrent. 2,000, almost 2,700%. So uh, my friend George is super happy about that. And then Terra, 2,100%. Uh, Solana, 1,700. Binance Coin, which we've all been talking about. Like, it's so great. But, you know, Doge, FTX, Cardano, Filecoin, VeChain, IOTA. Those are the big type of gainers. So I know we talk about how great certain products are doing, but really, if you're just here for the, the almighty cash, it's the percentages and uh, just somebody to follow, uh, Charlie Biello. And then lastly, I just want to say that uh, shout out to uh, Mike, the investor, because he was talking about BitTorrent all the time and for a long time ago. And I just, uh, uh, he's one of the guys that I recommend and uh, missed the ball on that one. So I just want to point out one real thing that in the description of every one of my videos, if you just scroll down, let me show you. Besides all the uh, tons of links that I have, I am the king of the show. Let's be honest. Uh, there's some people that I watch almost every day. And these are the ones that I recommend just because either they're kind of like me or they kind of have the same message and they're not 
crazy, wacky people. So first one, Alex Mascioli, uh, because that guy, I mean, he he was the on the institutional side, uh, head of Bquan Services, deals with a lot of those uh, billion dollar hedge fund guys. So he's kind of like the inside guy. Uh, Alex Becker, if you don't know him, that guy is, he's pretty funny and he's been around the space for a little bit of time, but he keeps things entertaining and he is also about percentage gains. Uh, Coin Bureau guy, I mean, that guy, guy is fantastic. If you want to know some great information and really have it broken down into small segments, uh, guy's, guy's your guy. Uh, Hashoshi, that's my guy over there. Forrest, he, uh, he's a developer, so you get the developer side of it, not just like my fundamental side, but actually the, the uh, nuts and bolts. Mike, the investor, low cap gem guy, uh, Dave, digital Dave, or crazy for cryptos. He's the one that, that turned me on to uh, Theta, Bitcoin Cash, and T Fuel. So definitely check him out. Nobs is, uh, you know, downtown Abbey, British kind of guy. And uh, he's just a little bit more uh, like reserved, even than me. And lastly, is uh, Diddy from Bitcoin Family. So again, check out those guys in the description. Uh, I watch them, like I said, almost every day, and uh, they always put out great stuff. So, First of all, if you stay with me at the end, I want to say thanks. I appreciate it. If you like the video, uh, give it a like. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things are time sensitive, really helps out. And that's it for today. So thanks so much for watching and uh, we'll see you on the next